Well, I just woke up, printed my paperwork off, got everything straight, got my logbook ready, and I'm about to head over to Elkhart to get loaded. It's cold. It's not that cold, but it's 31 degrees. And I messed around yesterday, and I messed my back up somewhere or another. I don't know what I did. So I've been moving slow, very slow. But especially, that's another thing. I I don't know where they're at. I'm going to have to dig them up. But if you're going to be up here in Indiana, especially uh, any of the northern states, I've got them somewhere. And if I, I'm, if I don't find mine, I'm going to order a new set because they're not that expensive. And I busted my butt twice last year on ice up here. I'm a big old boy, it hurts when I hit the ground. But uh, they've got the cleats that are on rubber that you just slip them over the edge of your boots and just pull them, pull them down. And I would get those and I keep them in my floorboard right here in front of the seat. And uh, if I needed them, I would slip them over the end of my boot and pull them up and they would latch onto the back side of my boot and do that on both sides. You can get out and walk around like a champ kind of like having cleats. I had never seen them before. I thought they were just neater than peanut butter. But anyway, I'm gonna run inside and try and get woke up, head over and get loaded and we'll be on our way. 5102, we're gonna be fancy going out on this trip. So I'm not used to this. This one's already got batteries on it, but either they're well, I was wondering if they were going to be dead on me, but I believe they're turned off, so let's turn it on. Yep, she got power, so that's a good deal. Don't even have to use my battery. Alright, looking up there at the top window, I see some little marks coming right around the window. Well, and it blurred out, but I'm going to say that's the silicone from sealing the window in. And then... Coming on back, looks wrinkled up, but that's the way it was made, so I'm not worried about that. Make sure there's nothing hanging from underneath, and check, make sure my caps are on my pipes down there, and they are. This one's got the generator tube exhaust. I don't know why it's not focusing when I do that, but the generator exhaust is going to hang out. Got to watch that. Kick all my tires, and I'll torque them after. I always kick them to make sure the air pressure's right. You know, make sure that they're not flat. I said that. And then um, I'll come back and torque them after I get hooked up. And everything back here looks good. And the best I can see down through there, everything looks good. We're gonna walk down through here and look it over a little closer but it's better for me to look from a distance I can see a lot better get up here and check all the cubby holes see if there's any paperwork a lot of times the paperwork will be in here but I'm going to check the doors first and that's the thing, you don't never know how long these units have been sitting here when you get here to pick them up, so. The tires could be, uh, the tires could be low. Um, anything could be happening. I always check, make sure all my doors are locked. I'm not seeing the paperwork yet, but I'm sure we'll find it eventually. Right over there. Okay. Well, everything seemed to check out. Now, you notice how this looks. Just go ahead and push front and it will start coming up. And then I'm gonna make sure I get it plenty high enough to go over my toolbox. It's all electric, it ain't like I'm hand cranking, so just go way too high. And then when I get back, I'm going to push the retract button and hit front again and that will let it down. Front will raise it up, retract front, never hit auto level. If you do it, it'll just start working its way out and it can damage the truck or it can let itself way down. I've never touched the auto level button. 
or any of these buttons, matter of fact. But I'm going back under it. All right, now I'm gonna come back and do just like what I told set a minute ago. I'm gonna hit retract. The light will light up. I'm gonna hit front. It's gonna go down. And I'm gonna go just lower than what my fifth wheel looks, which that may be just a little bit on the low side, but it'll be fine. Then I'm gonna come in here and make sure my jaws are opened up, which I've already looked and they are. I won't back on under. Now one thing about it, when you're backing up, I don't care if you've been doing it for 20 years or if you've been doing it for 10 minutes, get out and look as many times as you feel like you need to to be comfortable. You know, the one time you don't get out and look is the one time you're gonna have an incident. So always get out and look. And if there's anybody ever says anything to you about a lot of people worried if they stop and get out and look 15 times, Somebody's gonna say something to them about it. And if somebody does walk over and say, dang, you gonna be all right? You having to get out a bunch or something like that, discouraging? They're probably the one with the long list of damages. I mean, you'll get used to it as you go, but always get out and look. The parking lot is slick, super, super slick. Now, I started leaving my pin hanging. You can see where it was at. I'm gonna get it hooked up here and I'll show you. This little arm right here, I've been just hanging my pin over it when I'm not using it. And, uh, Really, really liking the the new fifth wheel setup. That I should have done that from from the beginning. But the other company that I was with required a sliding fifth wheel. You know, so it is what it is. It's fine. But I'm really happy to have it set up like that now. Now, I like to go ahead and pull this out and hook this up and make sure you make a tight turn before you leave the lot and make sure it's not gonna pull this cable out. You do not want this cable coming out after you've plugged into your truck because what that does is it sends power from the batteries on the trailer and it will back feed into your system. These late model trucks do not like it. So, let's see. That's a little short. We're gonna check it just the same, but I believe, personal opinion, that's a little short. But we'll see. Now, what's the next thing I do? Before I go any further, the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that those jaws are locked. And I see that they are. And I wanna do that after I latch the pull my arm around and lock it in, that's the next thing to make sure those lock, those pins actually did grab that kingpin. The jaws actually did grab the kingpin. Make sure that's plugged in good and tight. I'm just gonna hit front. And that's gonna squat her on down. This will be a little bit of a bumpy ride because my airbag controller is malfunctioning. And this, the leg's coming up on this side, but it's not on the other side. I believe the other side's frozen to the ground. But one leg goes all the way up, then the other leg comes all the way up. They don't both have to come up at the same time. When this one bottoms out, it'll pick that other side up. Here it cracked loose from the ice. Now I just wanna stand over here and watch until it's all the way up. 
and you can hear it also bottom out that's it i want to open this door up this is where my paperwork's at there's a lot of lights on in here if i can i'm gonna turn these lights off this one doesn't have a switch it opens with it comes on with the door but I turn as many lights off as I can to make sure if I park overnight or something happens where I have to turn my truck off for a long period of time, the it won't drain my battery. We'll get the keys and paperwork. Then I'm gonna pull off this sheet of ice I'm working on, get out here in the gravel somewhere and finish up. Walk back up here. I'm gonna check my brakes. I see they are working. I was pulling my gooseneck at home and the brakes are really tight on it. I'm turning these all the way up and I'll adjust them down as I need to to keep from sliding the tires. Well, there she is. All hooked up, ready to go. Tags on, lug nuts torqued. Um, yeah, just taking one final look around. It's yeah, parking lot's sleep. Doesn't look it, but it's sleep. But at least I ain't Mr. Tennessee. He's over playing in the playing in the uh, mud this morning. He went to a different yard that's known for being really muddy. And all my lights are working. Everything seems good on that. The GBWR on this one is. Uh, 20,000 pounds. The shipping weight is 15,200. So the truck weighs 10,000. The unit weighs 15,000. If I was another 1,000 pounds heavier, I wouldn't be able to haul it. Not with a 26,000 pound tag on. So kind of going back to what I said, the stuff I was talking about in the video the other night. Anyhow, my airbag controller has went out and it's not even trying to work so that's on stock suspension right there i'm gonna try to play with it later on to see if i can get it to work but i mean really when you look at it looks to me like it's flat level it's not squatted at all or maybe y'all see something in the camera i can't but one thing i have a hardest time remembering to do pull my mirrors out Else I do want to say if you have a sliding back glass I'll always leave my back glass open when I'm getting hooked up that way if something does crunch or something doesn't sound right I can hear it um, and then you can also when I'm backing into my trailer I don't worry that much about what that looks like I worry more about what that looks like I keep it center of that window when I'm backing into it and it helps me out a lot now if you hear the compressor kicking on, and I know I said my airbag controller was malfunctioning, and it is, I was just giving it a last shot because I'm not laying on the ground up here. Um, I was gonna see if it would air up, and what it's doing is as soon as it starts airing up, the controller leaks through the Bluetooth manifold from air lift. It leaks back down. As, as, it's, as the air's going in, you can hear it gushing air, and then it just leaks right back down. Now, it's done it a few times before, and it actually eventually sealed off so that would be nice if that happens but if it doesn't then i will stop and put let's see if i can show you where the lines come from the uh bluetooth controller there's a t in it i will put this guy in take the t out make it straight and then i have an emergency valve on the back that i can use to air it up if i need to you know if this thing's just beating me to death going down the road, I'll air them up. If not, I'd probably just leave it alone. Um, or if, by the time I get to dry pavement, if they've uh, started working, I'll go on. And if they don't start working, I'll pull a fuse on it because I don't want it sitting there burning my compressor up. So when I was at home, I was pulling my gooseneck. When I was pulling my gooseneck, my brakes are super tight. So I had them down about three. Um, or I'll slide my tires. Now, this thing, I, when I hook to a camper, I usually go straight to 10. I'll let it start rolling. 
and then I'll hit the brakes. That slid the tire, so I know I need to come down some, probably a lot. So we'll take it down to 7.5. I will squeeze the controller again. That's still a lot. I heard the tires slide. Go to five. That's a good smooth brake. Now I'll adjust them again as I ride. If they tighten up some more, I believe I could come back up to six because these new trucks work off uh, brake pressure to the best of my knowledge. So the harder you apply the brake, the harder it goes. You know, I'm sitting there feathering the brake pedal. So if you want to have, you can't turn it down to three and still have brakes. You need it tightened up as tight as it'll go without sliding the tires. Now, if it starts raining, you need to check. If it starts snowing or ice on the road or something like that, you need to back them off again because, you know, a little bit because you don't want them sliding. And away we go. I checked my my emergency breakaway cable. I didn't do that. I wish I could have got more of it on camera for you guys, but if I'm acting like I don't feel very good, it's because I don't feel very good. Like I said, I twisted my back sometime last night. I don't know if I slept wrong or what, but yesterday it was bad too. It was actually worse yesterday than it is today. I don't know what I'm doing, but my back is jacked up. So, getting frustrated with this. This is the piece that's malfunctioning, and you'll probably hear it in a minute, and I'm just getting tired of it because it's running my compressor to death. I had, it's done it a few times and it sealed off when I put a load on it but what it's doing when it goes up you'll hear it sound like it's leaking it's gushing air and after the brakes go up now it's coming back down so it'll just sit there and leak and it's leaking out of the exhaust port and like I say I was two months out of warranty I think on getting this replaced so I am going to bypass this and just air my bags up just put just a little it's riding good i mean i just don't like feeling it constantly go up and down hear my compressor kick on so anyway look at all that if you do put an air tank on make sure you get a good way to get out of it. So anyway i'm gonna go ahead and fix this i'll show you what i'm doing now there's my rear end i fixed the pinion seal last week last time i was home i made it to indiana back down this far everything looks good now if you look, right there, there's a T-connector. And what I'm going to do is just unplug the T-connector and get rid of the line going to the manifold and just link those straight together. And right on the other side, there's another T-connector that goes to the emergency valve on the back of the truck. And that's what I'll be filling it from. I'll fix this and then I'll show you what I did. Now you can see the one airline I just taped off. I don't know if you can see that or not. I just taped it off to keep stuff from going into it. And then I put the uh, other connector in and took the three-way connector out. It was really quick. The quick connectors are great for stuff like this. They are, they don't seal very well. So that's it. I pulled the fuse out of the air, the air lift, the wireless one. And uh, that way it's not sitting here constantly discharging air. And now I'll take my air hose and air my bags up. By doing it this way, my air compressor still works. And you heard you hear it running over there now. It kicked on when I plugged the air hose into it. Right beside of that, there's my emergency valve. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's right there. So now I look at my springs and you see how all the springs are compressed, they're all together. That bottom spring, when it barely gets a crack in it, I know from all the years, from all the time I run this truck, that's where it's going to ride the best. Put some air in it. saw it come up. Not hardly enough yet. Kind of hard for me to do one-handed. But... Right there, you 
you see that bottom spring is just barely got a little gap in it now that's where this truck will ride the best and if i did air it up too much if it starts bouncing i can always let it back down without having to drag my air hose back out so that's got me i'm good while i'm under the truck rolling around i always check my fuel filter i can see it bubbling through the filter see the bubbles coming in I know it's transferring I would really rather that filter be on top in the bed where I can look where I can watch it but no leaks so when I got hooked up I didn't really feel like I was squatted that bad but now it's, I would say I didn't put a gauge on it but I'd say it's probably maybe around 25 pounds of pressure because I it may be 35 and it's got just a little bit of a rake to it I believe that's going to be a little bouncy. I think I'll probably let some out, but it looks it looks good. It's going to be a lot better. It was doing fine. I just kept hearing my compressor running and running and running. If I'm going to do it, I might well say I'm up. So let's get back on the road. So I put the filter on, and this is the reason why I don't run a filter, because it drains so much slower going through the filter being gravity fed. Now, if you look at that, I don't know if you guys can see, but the fuel it's still there's still a good solid what did I say one two there's three inches of fuel in my tank and uh, right before I got here I'm gonna tighten that down all the way because I'm right here at the fuel pump but right before I got here it got down so low that it sucked there when it sucked there it misfired check engine light came on so I'm not real sure how that filter is gonna work out but I will let you know right now i can either turn it on sooner and try to drain more out but the three inches of fuel that's a lot of fuel so good possibility that fuel filter is not gonna work for me either so here in joplin missouri at the i-44 petro and getting ready to get out and or getting ready to get on the road and uh just kind of walking around looking if you guys I know people that kind of flip out if they ever let the truck idle overnight and when they take off the next day it starts smoking. Chances are it's not oil smoke. It's if whenever you park that night, your truck's getting ready to do a regen, I believe it just loads the exhaust up and that yellow stuff running out of the exhaust pipe right there, that's what it is. And I know a bunch of people saying, delete it. You know, yeah, it may be coming, I don't know. But right now, I mean, I was just pointing out, if you do start smoking when you first take off after idling, it's probably not an issue. It's probably just burning that unburnt def off. You know, it's not anything to freak out about. That's the only reason I brought it up. But, you know, of course the trucks would be better if they didn't have it on it. But, anyway. Uh, yeah, everything still looks good. Nothing blown off yet. Rancho Cucamonga, if you've never been there, they're super picky. They will take it back and completely detail it and... You may be sitting there for a while, so always bring your lunch. I've been there before. I've got videos on it from before. Um, one thing I didn't do before I left yesterday is familiarize myself with the spare tire and the tool to get it down. So I may try to do that shortly before we leave. But I'm pretty sure if I know I have a socket and a long extension, so I think if I can find the hole that you go into to get the tire right there I'm pretty sure I can get the rest of it it doesn't have the hole in the side of it like the rest of them do I don't think anyway I'll figure that out yeah so I did this a little backwards though and then got a shower and come out and I thought well you know what I ought to look and see if I see any signs of oil because I've been seeing this right here around the motor so personally I think that's the oil pan seeping a little bit so we wind up having to put an oil pan gasket on it but i thought i was, thought i'd seen the yoke leaking before seeping a little bit of oil but it's dry as a bone so we ain't gonna worry about that and then there's one other spot i don't know if i can be able to get where you can see it or not right over there where that axle seal is that looks has looked sometimes it looks wet sometimes it don't but I sprayed my 
oil pan and all off with brake parts cleaner and got it good and clean and I did not get up under between the cross member and stuff and you still see this a little greasy and the rest of it's not so I'm thinking it's just that oil pan leaking if it's not it would be the rear main seal so I didn't notice there's an inspection cover there so I will be pulling that inspection cover off probably sometime today just because I'm lazy and I don't feel good I don't want to get up and go find the the uh find something to get off with now and that way I can look in there and that'll tell the tale if I look in that inspection cover and it's greasy then it's the rear main seal and that's bigger issues but nothing I'm real worried about this here's from the other side and the first place I noticed oil was on these lines right here and I believe it's dripping off the bolt not a lot I mean it's very I've had vehicles before if it looked like this I would consider the oil leaks fixed you know just saying uh, I've had uh, I'm seriously thinking that's an oil pan gasket I don't think it's a rear main seal because I got to thinking if it was a rear main seal right here at this notch there would be oil all over that and that's dry it looks it looks dark but it's dry and also the inspection plate I found over there a while ago and this one right here as well there would be oil dripping out of that I mean it would be oil or oily mess this would be worse than well that if you can see that you know well, well that would be worse than this see so, yeah, I think it's just an oil pan gasket and like I say I've got I don't know if you can see this again or not but that seal is definitely leaking and it would be a good idea to pull the front differential out And this cross member right here and then you can take that oil pan right off I believe and uh, well, I'm pretty positive go ahead and put an oil pan gasket on it and put all these seals in the front chunk and hopefully possibly a locker but that's a whole different story for another day and like I say I'm at the Joplin truck stop there's nothing but a thing for me to jump under my truck I think everybody should do it. Also, all right. This here is my air tank, my two and a half gallon air tank. Buyer. This is all I have to drain the water out. All right. You notice that wasn't a lot of water. The reason for that being is the truck's tilted downhill. Yes, it's on a right the rear end sits a little higher in the front end the water collects right here if I put put it on an uphill stretch I can bleed it and it comes out a lot more water my question is I'm seriously considering taking it off taking it to a machine shop having them weld another bung in right here so I can put one of these up front and drain it from there but also just trying to figure out a good way to get the water out so if any of you guys have onboard air or well, with the 18-wheeler, I thought about putting an air dryer on it, but I don't really know for sure how I'd make all that work. Any suggestions or ideas would be cool. And also, since I pulled the uh, disconnected this box yesterday, the airbags have stayed up, and it was handling the load fine, but it really made it a lot more comfortable putting a little air in the airbags. But I think I'm going to take this off somewhere across through here and dissect it and see what's, what's going on with it especially seeing how uh, it's out of warranty there you know another thing when I was home I bought a, another weight distribution hitch the Gen Y is great but uh, I decided I'd try something different because I'm always kind of having to change out the you know the big heavy shank I'm just I'm getting older it stuff's heavy so I thought I would try this out so one thing I was wanting to point out is, well, a lot of people want to know what the little balls are for up there. I, I, you know, a lot of folks don't know it's for sway control. So you can buy a sway control, I'm gonna call it a contraption for a mechanism. We'll call it a mechanism because that don't sound so redneck. Uh, that it'll have a ball on the trailer and a ball on the hitch. And I've heard they work good. I've never ran one. But when I bought this hitch, I did get one, two of them actually. 
and I'm thinking about trying something out with that and if I do making it where it's portable because that's the reason we don't use them is because you have to modify the frame to put the ball on and all that stuff and we can't do that with a new camper I'm working on something and I have a video on that if, I, if it works out now if you'll notice my hitch is barely slanted back barely tilted back when I got the hitch it was not it was standing straight up and down now the reason for that is I'm going to show you on Mr. Tennessee's truck over here next to me. He just happened to have a bumper pull right next to me. There's not much to doing it. Here, I'll show you this. Alright. So, if you look at his uh, bars, his weight distribution bars, you want those bars to be pretty well straight. You, know, you don't want them kicked way up in the front. You don't want them like that or you know way down. You want them level. They, they just tend to work better when they're level with the frame of the trailer when everything is a straight shot when you look across back here now in the event that his were pointing down he had enough tension they were just pointing down meaning that they could drag or something could you know they're just they might be too low well then you tilt that hitch forward you would tilt it this way and it would bring those bars up you still keep the same tension you just have your chains will be shorter you know and then if in my case where the bars would be up too close to the trailer frame it'd be way up here when you tilt it back it'll drop them down that's why you see a lot of guys going down the road and there's are tilted back and if it's hard to see from here but his are his is tilted back slightly as well and his bars are almost perfectly level with the frame so i didn't know if you buy a hitch and that's what I probably recommend doing if you're just getting into this. I think it's a four hundred dollar. You know, it's four hundred, right around four hundred dollars. Go buy one new from one of the places in Indiana. I, the one I've got right here behind me, the one on my truck. I picked this one up for uh, one hundred fifty dollars. Came with both sway controls and all the brackets and bars and all that stuff. So get on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist definitely look in goshen middlebury elkhart and all that stuff you know and keep those tips in mind and i'm gonna show you on, on his because it's easier to see see these washers right here that's how you adjust that you put more washers in to bring your bars closer to the ground you take some washers out to tilt them back tilt the bars back up and there's a a, a bolt right down here that bolt is when you tighten that bolt up it tightens those washers up and then you can look at it and see if it's where you want it and if it's not then you would you loosen it take a washer out out of washer and tighten it back up so that's what I wanted to show on that and it's, it's really not hard I'm I'm thinking I will probably kind of make a, a, a video on how to set it up even though there are some other setup but it will be uh, more so on the sway control. If I can make that work, I think I like it. And I'll go ahead and tell you what I'm planning on doing. From what I've seen, the sway control, there will be a ball right here on his hitch, just like on mine over there. And then you'll have the sway control piece. And you can put it on either side. See where the breakaway box is right here? But it needs to be 24 inches from that ball back to here and there'll need to be a ball on the side of the trailer well what i was going to do is weld on to this bracket a piece of flat bar that will come out here that'll never touch the trailer frame that will have that ball on because the bracket by itself is not there's only the one jam nut holding it on but once you add the uh chain and apply that down force i personally don't think it's going to slide that bracket i don't think it'll interfere with anything so once I, once I put it on, I try it. It works really good for me. I'll make a video on it and let you guys know how it goes. So being out crawling around under the truck, I really didn't get too bad. I wished I'd done it before I took my shower, but I didn't, didn't get to. Engine hours. My engine hours hit 10,000 hours last night. 329,017 miles and 10,004.6 hours. That's a lot. I don't know that I've ever owned a vehicle, a vehicle, my 18-wheeler did, but 
far as a pickup truck or a car or something like that. I don't know that I've ever owned one that had that kind of mile on it. And I'm feeling a lot better today. Um, past couple of days, I, I don't know if I, I twisted my back or something. It just, I was worried it was something in my kidneys, but you know, I don't think it is. I think it was just I twisted my back. And being on that ice yesterday, that didn't help at all either. I'm sure a lot of guys watching this video, some of the younger guys may not know what I'm talking about, but the older guys watching this video, you can get up, work like a dog all day long, never bother you. You sneeze just right, throw you back out. It's horrible. But uh, anyway, that I wanted to crawl up under the truck and look because you know she's getting older, getting a bunch of miles, a lot of hours, and all that stuff. And I'm expecting oil leaks. I'm expecting anything. I'm trying to prepare for the watch for the worst and hope for the best. You know. So uh, I've figured I'd crawl up under there and look and I was really surprised. I think I'm going to get away with just trying to put an oil pan gasket on it. It looked really dry everywhere else. And I was worried it may be the rear main seal, but the inspection hole, I noticed that one dead on the bottom inspection hole. That would be, uh, there would be a lot of oil around that if that was it. So I don't think I'm going to worry too much about that now. Which I was going to use that for an excuse to put a torque converter in. I really want to put a torque converter in, but I'm really just not feeling it at the moment. I don't have a good place to do it and all that. But every now and again, whenever, well, pretty much every time, it'll go through first, second, third, and then when the torque converter locks up, you can watch it on, on my screen where I have the thing. It'll show when the torque converter locks up. It, it just grinds. It sounds like you're slipping gears and automatic and a straight shift and a manual. And uh, started doing that at 230,000, and here it is, 330,000. 330 it's 100,000 miles and it hasn't gotten any worse so if it's not broke don't fix it but at the same time if I have a reason to pull all that stuff apart I'm going to do it anyway welcome to Oklahoma the scales back there the Joplin scales I was really hoping to get a video of rolling across those scales with this toy hauler because whenever I was uh, hauling the 18 wheelers If you saw how, how we were doing that with a booming, you were driving one semi, towing the other semi where you pick up truck up in the middle on the back. And they were, I did not get one of those tickets, but a couple other people I know did. And I, I was running with people and you'd be three in line and they would get the first one and pull them in, you know, and they would, when they did the inspection, they'd give them a ticket because doing it that way, there was no way to get your axle weight right you were over on the axle all the time. And that's another reason I didn't really particularly care for that. I, it was a cool job. Just, I didn't care for the company and I didn't care for that, that one little, little legal issue that we were gonna get overweight ticket any time across the scale. So not overweight as a whole, but overweight on, overweight on the steer axle on the back truck that's being towed because it picked all the way to that truck up and put it right on the, on the um, steers. But uh, I really wanted to get a video rolling across that this morning with the big, I've been across that skill for two years with these big campers like this and they have never bothered me. As long as I'm under my 26,000, they, you know, they don't bother me. And I was gonna weigh this one back there, just see what it weighed, but I didn't, I'm lazy. But uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty more. I went across the, Missouri skills on up on 44. I come through there and that's the first time I'd ever seen that skill house open. Kind of blew my mind to come over the hill and saw the green lights to the closed lights, you know, the open lights to the closed lights. But if you do pull a triaxle, when you go through the scale, the tolls up here, the tolls will be more expensive because they charge by axle. Some in some places charge by weight. These down here charge by the axle when you pull up the ash jam, how many axles you got. And you got two on the truck, three on the camper, so that's five axles and it'll be a little more expensive. So on 44 coming across through here with five axles is $20.50 in case anybody wanna know it. 20, 50 at two different toll plazas, so it's $41. And if you got four axles, it's 12, 
two twelve twenty five, so that's twenty four fifty for the tolls coming across forty four from uh, Oklahoma City to Joplin. So, I had a friend of mine call just a few minutes ago, right? Uh, right as I came through that last toll, and he asked where I was at. I told him we were about to come to Oklahoma City. He said, "Yeah, you might want to start looking for a place to pull over." I said, "Why?" He said, "And I've not noticed any wind." I've not noticed any wind at all. And uh, Mr. Tennessee had said something about with that bumper pull. He said, man, is that wind hitting you yet? I said, no. He said, well, I'm feeling it. You know, it's not bad. It's just I am feeling the wind picking up. So we got to look. If we can make it to Sayre, Oklahoma, that's probably where we're going to be at till tomorrow afternoon sometime. It's going to be 50 mile an hour wind gusts all the way from well, really, it's just going to get worse and spread out further. Right now, it starts in Sayre, Oklahoma, and goes all the way to Amarillo. By the time we get there, it's going to be, it'll spread all the way over to where we're at right now. We may have shut down before we get to Sayre, just depending on how it is. We're both going to keep a good watch on it and see what happens. So, that's what happens. You leave out thinking, oh, man, I got all the time in the world. I have four days, go three days worth. And then once you get on the road, you'll either hit that backup or those multiple backups or wind or something will shut you down. So that's why it's always best to run it like you know, like you need to. And if you don't have downtime, have it on the other end. Have it closer to your delivery versus dragging your feet first taking off and all that stuff and then still having that whole ride to go for something to go wrong. Well, this is uh, not where I wanted to make it to tonight, but this is it. Uh, the wind is horrible. We're moving along about 45 mile an hour, and it wasn't even affecting me until it did. When it, when it finally started hitting me, it was hitting me really hard, and this is the next exit after that. We're like 50 miles from Sayre, Oklahoma. We're at mile marker 71. If it was, if it's starting to affect me like it's affecting me, I imagine it's got to be having its way with that little travel trucker he's pulling. So, I mean, big trucks slowing down. I mean, ain't, ain't just us stopping; it's everybody stopping. It's just time to get off road. The bad part about it is, we'll most likely be here till I think three o'clock tomorrow afternoon when it's supposed to calm down. So that's even if we can get parking in here. But I believe there is a boot store right across the street that's got a massive parking lot. So, you know, I feel like it'll be about a safe option that we're going to get. So, we parked here at the Trading Post boot outlet. And I'm hoping, I'm going to set my phone on the cooler. I don't know if you guys will see this or not. But we're fitting that to move. We're straight to the where it's hitting us dead in the side. Was hoping to get around here in front of the building that blocks some of the wind off, but if you can see that, that's crazy. And there's Mr. Tennessee, and my truck's moving more than his is. But he has that 18 wheeler blocking the wind off of him, so that's a lot better for him right now. But it, that, that trailer still gets to dash around like crazy every now and again. Which I can't hold the camera still. I mean, this is insane. Let's get out and look. I had to turn the volume all the way down in this clip because the wind was just so loud. It would, it, yeah. I just turned the volume all the way down. You can see the chains moving on the side of the fence, but the truck in the video. I can't really see that it's moving that much, but we were standing there watching it lean back and forth in the wind. It's crazy how much calmer the video makes it look. But anyway, it was definitely time to get off the road. This is the next day while I'm editing and I'm still sitting in the same parking lot. It was just ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. When I got out, I had to lean into it and I had to hold the phone with both hands keep from blowing the phone out of my hand. So, I want one nose into it because we don't want stuff flying into the back of the camper and damaging the camper. 
and also so when we open our doors it won't snatch our doors out of our hands so we'll get situated and see how things go well i finally got situated we're right across the street from the love's truck stop and there was a camper here with a jacks down and the wind's still blowing him around but then i got the big truck on one side of me and so he'll be blocking the air off of me and this one will be blocking the wind off of me so i think i'll be good right here tonight so this guy right here decided that he was gonna leave and i told him i'd be real careful that thing had one axle under i'm he said we're just gonna try to go down one exit and see just woke up well i've been up for a few minutes and uh there was a guy in front of me getting ready to he was getting ready to pack up and try to head out and uh They said we had a window this morning where the wind died off just a little bit between six and eight. It's nine o'clock now, and uh, I didn't feel that. You know, I was up up through most of that time, and I was still laying in bed. And, yeah, it was still felt like I was laying in a washing machine, just getting shut back and forth. So it's a lot better now. We pulled around a parking lot, got nosed into it where it wasn't hitting us from the side; it was hitting us head on. And it's crazy. You can feel. I had the big truck on the side of me and I had another camper in front of me and you could still feel it hitting the truck and shoving you back that's crazy this is I 80 type of weather right here and then I woke up and it's snowing so I don't expect enough snow to make a difference but who knows and according to the weather it was showing it would be about seven o'clock tonight before it blows out so that'd be interesting and whenever it does blow out, it looks like it's just gonna go straight calm, just flat calm, like back down to 12 mile an hour winds with 15 mile an hour gusts or something like that, which is not bad at all. You know, that's that's not bad at all. So anyway, it, when we stopped here last night, it was like right around 50 degrees, if I remember right. I think it was like 52 degrees whenever the wind started picking up, and it is 27 freaking degrees now. There was a guy loading the, or moving his generator, that guy that just pulled out was moving his generator and all that stuff, and he was trying to get a door open, so I ran up there and opened the door for him, and he put the generator in, and golly, my ears just froze. But I was sitting here in a warm truck, hadn't been out yet this morning, so I hadn't, I, I wasn't even thinking about it, and I got back in the truck and looked, and I'm like, 27 freaking degrees. We left last night over at uh, Clinton, Oklahoma, made it over to Glen Rio over at Russell's. I went ahead and pulled in, the wind had died down. It, it was like somebody just cut it off about six o'clock. And made it over there and got a good night's nice sleep. Went in and got breakfast this morning and now we're down here about to go through the port of entry. I say I had to go ahead and get a permit and that covers my truck going across New Mexico, basically like fuel taxes. $29.20 after you fee and all. Now we want to go to Kingman. That's where we plan on stopping tonight. We'll stop in uh, Milan and get fuel and then turn around and get uh, turn around and get fuel again tomorrow in Kingman before we leave out and head it on into California. Got a full house in here this morning. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to stop and take the fuel filter out somewhere. It's not, it's really put a big restriction on. I was hoping that would be a free or flowing filter with a, and with a glass on, I'd be able to look in and see what kind of trash was accumulate, accumulating from my tank. But like I said, it's been two years. I haven't had a problem with it. I'm just going to... I may step up to a 3 8 line. i got a 5 16 fuel line on it now, and I may step up to a 3 8 That way it just has more... Um, you know, more volume. Put the filter back on it and see if that steps it up. But to do that, i got to change the fittings on both ends. So, you know. Yeah, that goes. 
anytime you pull into a sky house, always rig your left one to down, your driver one to down, because they've got speakers out here that they will give you direction sometimes over to speakers. So, uh, especially if you messed up, they'll, they'll get right on those speakers if you mess up. <laughs> And when you're pulling up to the scale, always stop and let the truck in front of you get off the scale before you go on to the scale. Like right here, I'm gonna stop and I'm not gonna move forward until, I'm not gonna go on to the scale until after he comes off. They held up the sign that said park coming inside. That's the every time thing. So I'm gonna run inside, get my permit, and then we'll get on the road again. So I did get my tag renewed whenever I was at home and whenever I went in, I always asked them to make sure they don't need the updated copy because she just asked for my truck number. And I gave her the truck number and she said uh, and I asked her about it. I said, I got my tag renewed. I said, you don't need any of that, do you? And she said, actually, yeah, if you have an updated registration. So that was uh, the only thing different. 2920 and 2920 and all good. I know it sure did turn out to be a nice day today. It was cold yesterday, but it has really warmed up some today. Wind's not blowing everything, just flat calm. Nice running. That day on wind yesterday, that was, that was rough. And that was, the last time I set that long on kind of wind was on I-80 and uh, up around Rawlins, Wyoming. Yeah, it was, that was an aggravating trip. It seemed like just one thing after another after another and then got hung up for the wind by, by the wind for two days, but part of it. So, anyhow, we're gonna get on across through here and then get to Milan and get fuel and get on over to Kingman for the night. Guy just pulled up the side of me, honking his horn and on. I didn't really know what he was talking about, and I glanced back. I didn't really see anything. Y'all really see anything? I mean, you can, but if you just glance over, I mean, you just don't see nothing. And we've been running around each other for a while. It just happened. This goes to show, no matter how much you watch and look at stuff, and how well these things are built, and how much money they cost, and all that stuff, always get out and check your doors. Oh wow, I didn't realize I'd do a recording. I didn't mean to show you up my nose. But check your doors and all that stuff because these latches will come open. I'm just glad, tickled to death, I was in the right lane and wasn't around and down. That door is locked. See? It's locked. I mean, and I checked all that stuff before I left, so you can never walk around these things and check them so much. Just walk around and push on the doors. But thank goodness that it didn't hurt anything. And like I say, uh, there, was, there was another truck that was between me and Mr. Tennessee there. You know, he pulled up honking his horn blowing. I thought one of the awnings had came out or something, but here on the side of the road, I'm gonna walk around. All these are locked, so I'm just gonna push right on the handles to make sure I don't hear them click. Make sure these things ain't come unscrewed. Even check these right here. See that one right there is locked, but it uh, still looks like it popped out a little bit at the bottom. Back there checking his doors too. But yeah, go ahead and get off the shoulder. 
since I'm here, something else I won't go over. If you have to get off on the shoulder, try not to let your wheels get too far off the grass because you don't want that thing to sink and you can get into some really soft spots even, even if it hasn't been raining. So I always be mindful of that. You know, keep the truck all the way up on, on the road and try to keep your trailer as close to the asphalt as you can and stay on this side of the truck. Don't be just hanging out on this side of the truck. See, if somebody were, if another 18 wheeler or something was not paying attention and they hit the back of my trailer, it's gonna hit me and I won't never know it's coming because I can't see. But you're still safer on this side of the truck than you are the other side of the truck in my opinion. But, and the next thing, now that we closed our door and we're ready to get going, be mindful of people coming at you. Do not just cut out into traffic. You know, when you're stopping, try to pick a place that has got a good deceleration, acceleration, and you'll know how long it takes for you to get your truck up to speed. I see all these trucks have gotten over. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get after it. I'm gonna hammer on it pretty hard. As soon as I can miss that bungee cord right there. But now, I'm gonna hammer on pretty good and get on back up to the flow of traffic. Leave your pull-away flashers on until you're back up to moving speed so people know you just came off the highway. I see so many people nowadays just come from a dead stop out into traffic like they're not even looking, you know. So now I'm gonna cut my flashers off and we're back up to 70. And uh, like I said, all the big trucks moved over to the left and that gave me a chance to get out. But I would have sat there all freaking day if I had to. I'm not gonna pull off from the dead stop and cut somebody off. And two, like I say, ask, I'll be mindful of it, but with no issues so far this far, you know, I've kind of been taking for granted that this is a high dollar unit that is got good latches and all that stuff. I mean, you saw the, the thickness of those latches. I mean, they weren't no baby latches. They were they they were about an inch long. They stuck down in there to lock that door. And also, I think you saw, I closed the door. It was locked. There's nothing you can do about that. If that happens, it's gonna you know it does happen on every kind of trailer I pull. The only trailers that I pulled that I've never had a door come open on is the horse trailers I pulled at Jimbo's and the cargo trailers. But anything resembling a camper with 11 quarters on it, um, well, I won't say that. I say the restroom trailers, anything with the regular latches, anything that doesn't have the bar style latch like on a horse trailer or on a cargo trailer. But anything with the pull handle latches, everything I pulled has had it had a door come open on at some point in time or another. Now I haven't had that happen to me in a long time, and I'm very thankful to the guy in that Ford Dealey that was pulling the horse trailer. Doubt they'll ever see this, but thank you so much. Because where I'm sitting, this unit is so tall. When I look over, that didn't catch my eye. I'm constantly scanning my mirrors to make sure where I'm at in the road, to make sure of everything. You know, trying to watch as much as I can. It's a good idea. A class I went through back when I first started driving 20 years ago, they drilled it into your head that every eight seconds, eight to 10 seconds, you need to glance at one mirror or the other. You know, now that's a lot. But after you've been driving for a while, pulling trailers for a while, that's not that much, you know? I mean, you'll just catch yourself doing it. And, but whenever it's so high in the air, then the only thing there is that strut. If it would have been nighttime, I would have never known it. So, always get out, push on your doors, pull on your doors and make sure they're not gonna open. If they do open, figure out a way. I've had to take bungee cords and go inside the unit. Not, in, you know, not get up inside the unit, but in the compartments, hook a bungee cord on the inside and hook it to the door. That way, if it does come open, it'll hold it shut. I've seen people, I know a lot of people, I gave a roll, gave away a roll of duct tape the other day to a guy who was gonna duct tape his door shut because that is an issue that I don't think I've ever talked about, the doors coming open. I know they, I know I'm, I think I've mentioned it a time or two in the videos, but I don't think I've ever stressed it like this. Yeah, so it didn't work out. When I took this thing off, 
it was still full of fuel, the filter housing itself, and I held it up both directions and it just sat and barely trickled through. I don't see really any contamination in it at all whatsoever. I don't really understand why it was not flowing any better than it was. So anyway, until I can figure it out, this is coming off and I'm going back to a straight fuel line. I've already done that. Uh, that's what it looks like now. It's actually a straighter flow. I figure it's gonna flow a whole lot easier. Uh, checked it, doesn't look to have any leaks. So we're about to turn in here at Rancho Cucamonga at Giant RVs. And if there's nobody else in front of us, we will pull right in. There's kind of a horseshoe and you'll turn into that horseshoe and pull around and just drop the trailer and put the paperwork in the mailbox, pull outside the gate and they come get you when you're done. So. Not too bad. Watch these trees down through here. They got trees hanging out on both sides. You have to almost stay to the center of the road for the majority of the ride down through here from the time you get off the interstate to here. And it looks like we're going to be able to pull right straight on in. Last time I was here, if y'all remember the video, I sat right here in the turning lane for an hour waiting to get in. So it was quite, quite a quite a wait. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and get all my stuff put up. So we are unhooked. And I dropped my paperwork in the mailbox. Now we get it back around here. They'll come get it, take it around back, detail it. And when you come out of here, there's a little strip parking lot, I guess what, what I'd call it. Where you can just turn right here and line up with everyone else. Once you get in here, you're kind of stuck. Line up with everyone else, and they'll come get you when they're when they're done. We they'll they will yell your name from across the fence most time, and you have to be listening. And then sometimes she will walk out from right over the corner there and yell for you. They actually have a horn that they blow too. And if you hear that horn blow, it's time to you know time to uh, go check and see if that was you. So I made it on over to Kingman last night and pulled in, uh, got fuel crashed woke up this morning I took off about 4 30 5 o'clock got in here about 9 it is 10 30 now and just waiting on them they're working on mine but I haven't got the paperwork back yet but as soon as they hand it to me I'm gonna scan it and go so I want to go ahead and finish this video um you get a driver expense sheet whenever they dispatch you on the load and the expenses was $41 in tolls, $29.20 on New Mexico permit. I did not get an Arizona permit because they were closed. I tried to get it online. My internet was no good, so I didn't get it online either. I tried three or four times, but at, after a while, I just said with it. I'll get it before I get there next time or something like that. All right, the, uh, well, most people want to know, the load paid two eleven a mile for that trailer. And that was $43.69.81. I spent $1,152 in, $1 in fuel. That covers from my house up to the, because uh, I was literally empty up with fuel in while I house. And then enough to get me to Glendale, bought fuel again. That covers from my house to Indiana, all the way to Rancho Cucamonga, Cucamonga the 2,071 miles. I have a full auxiliary tank and an eighth of a tank in the pickup so I have enough I feel like to get back to Amarillo when I get to Amarillo I will fuel up again but that's going to be clean enough to get me on to uh, back in the back up to Indiana and get started on my next trip so that will come out of the next load so that is the full in my opinion that's the full round trip 
you know, it paid, because if I would have been out here delivering, it would have been about the same difference. You know, anyway, so that's my round trip, $1,152. So if you take the 1152 from the 43, 6981, that's 32, 17, 80. And there was someone commented the other night, so you can't make no money in a single pool. I'm fine with that. I still have to take out for my truck payment, my tags, my taxes, my maintenance, and all that stuff. Still a pretty good week for me. Y'all have a great week, and I will see you again in the next video.